You gotta take control. Life's too short. Get out of your head. Make a better life instead. You gotta give it all your best. So put your hands up to the sky and live your best life. All right, don't just let it go by. Just try. Oh my, got only one life. Got only this time. We gonna get it right. You gotta let go of those who don't belong in your tribe. So cut the bad out of your life. Hey guys, it's Shadow Joey, and after the news that came out last night, the shots Oh, it's good to do that! For Downey is Doom. Okay, first of all, let's talk about this for a minute. You're betting against Robert Downey Jr., main supporting actor from Oppenheimer, and the Russo Brothers, the man that really gifted, the two men that really gifted you the amazing MCU other than Feige in the palm of their hand. Like Tony Stark says to Loki in, in the first Avengers movie, not a great plan. That was the plan. Not a great plan. Like, really? It's, it's not a great plan. Because these are the goats, man. These three men are the trinity of amazingness. And so, I see a bunch of you guys being like, oh, he's not going to be the main doom. He's going to be like, there's going to be a misdirect. There's going to be a variant. Like, he could be a variant. But one thing you need to know, don't expect any misdirect. This news, he showed up at Comic-Con on stage Reveal that he's doomed, because he is doomed. Make no mistake about that. And, well, he I, I see some people worried that he's going to be jokey as doom. Robert Downey Jr. is an incredible actor. Not every role that he plays in the MCU or in any universe is he going to be this funny, jokey person. He knows how to take doom seriously. And Marvel has, in with the Fox movies, three times they screwed up doom. This is my favorite comic book villain of all time they can't risk after the MCU almost went down the drain once with Miss Marvel with She-Hulk with Secret Invasion we can't afford any misses it needs to be hits 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 I mean if Thunderbolts fails fuck it whatever we still got Deadpool and Wolverine that's amazing we still got Moon Knight we still got all these other great projects but for the most part I want hits from Marvel you know home runs right baseball we're, we're, we're hit we're hitting it we're hitting all the levels here and so one of the other things that you need to talk about with Doctor Doom is with Iron Man, Iron Man as a hero relied on his suit of armor. Doom has many talents. He's not just about tech. He's also focused on power and weaponry and hand-to-hand -hand combat. He's a master of the mystic arts. He's a martial arts master, which a lot of people might not know about him. He is also an incredible tactician, owner of his own country, being Latveria, has his own army, uses weapons, his entire suit of armor. Iron Man may have Repulsor tech and nanotech, but Doom has access to um, to the ability to um, to shoot lightning and energy beams. And none thing I want to mention to you guys is there is a way that they can make Iron Man if they wanted to go the Tony Stark being Doom thing and not Victor Von Doom. There is a way to make the Victor Von Doom slash Tony connection actually work in the MCU and still be the best MCU villain we've ever gotten and still pay homage to Doom. It doesn't have to be Victor Von Doom. There's all the versions of Doom. But I do believe personally he's Victor Von Doom. And he, doesn't, he might not have to be our main prime Doom, but I think he will be one of them. And I think he will be serious. I think this will be a great role for Downey. And the way that they can do this is, if you guys heard of the comic book storyline called The Infamous Iron Man, where Tony Stark actually, you know, Doom actually takes Iron Man's armor and, you know, he becomes Doom and Iron Man at the same time. So it's an Iron Man suit, but with Doom's cloak. I mean, they could do something similar like that. There's a lot of other copies where there's a variant of Iron Man that took over the place of Doom. So if they, but, so let's talk about the, the pros and cons of this. They could do the Tony Stark variant, becomes Doom, and it could still work, and it could be awesome. But I hope he's Victor Von Doom. Because I think you guys are sleeping on an amazing opportunity. But also, I'm down for, for Tony Stark being Doom either. The fact that we're getting Doom at all, I don't care who the actual alter ego of Doom is. I'm here for Doom. Like, like people are teasing in, in dialogue between Spider-Man. To Mr. Stark? No, child. Only Doom. Doom is the greatest comic. This is the Vader. Who was saying Thanos is the Vader of the MCU? This is the true Vader of the MCU. This man is rocking a mask. I'm rocking a. Ma I'm rocking the mask and the green suit, all the way, all the way to um, in 2026 at my movie premiere. I'll be rocking the Doom costume. I've been dreaming of being Doctor Doom one day. This is my chance. I love Doom. I mean, come on. This. I will have a music video put out for Doom later. It's, it's, it's incredible, guys. Doom is awesome.
So I'm hyped about this, guys. Like, what we have here, I think this character is absolutely amazing. I think they have potential to make an even better character than you could possibly imagine. I think Robert Downey Jr. and the Rooster Brothers worked so hard with the previous movies to make to to make Iron Man work. They have so much time to develop Doom. We don't even know if they could do TV shows to expand him. We know he's in Avengers 5. We also know that, according to Matt Shackman, director of Fantastic Four, he's also going to feature into some capacity of Fantastic Four. We're probably going to get the Thanos reveal, the final do it myself, but with Doom, which is going to be great because I freaking love Doom. Doom is intelligent. So intelligent, he can outwit Tony Stark, Reed Richards, Black Panther, all our heroes at once. He's just incredible. And he's super powerful, has such a gravitas to him, the way he walks around, how how menacing he is. And he is a conqueror. And he will, um, a much better conqueror than Kang. Pivoting to Doom was the smartest decision Mom, Marvel could ever make. When Robert Downey Jr. was announced as Doom, it was the greatest, most boldest decision they could have made. A lot of people think this is a backfire. I think this is an absolute win. I love the idea we're getting Doom. And I love that Downey's going to play him. And I think this is going to be amazing. I think it's going to work. But anyway, guys, this is just my opinion. What are your thoughts on this? Are you guys excited about Dr. Doom being played by Robert Downey Jr.? Did my video make me sway your opinion a little bit? Let me know. And if you like what you see here and you want to see more, click over here to see more. And remember, conquer them all. They all will fall. We are Doom. Have a great day. Ladies and gentlemen, as proof of the unimaginable possibilities in the Marvel multi-universe, we give you the one person who could play Victor Von Doom. New mask. Same task. What can I tell you? I like playing complicated characters. Holy mother of God. Robert Downey Jr. is back in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and will play Victor Von Doom, aka Doctor Doom in Avengers 5, which has now been retitled to Avengers Doomsday. My goodness, man, tonight's Hall H was absolutely bonkers and Marvel is just going all out. I mean, we saw Harrison Ford, John Carlo Esposito, and now Robert Downey Jr. all appear in the same night for the same studio. It is actually crazy. Yes, there might be some fans who wouldn't like this decision because the send-off that RDJ got as Iron Man was literally perfect. So to come back again is like risking it all. So there has to be a compelling story and a very good plot. Now here's how I see this. The Marvel Cinematic Universe began with Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man. He's the reason a simple Marvel Studios movie turned into a whole freaking cinematic universe. And now he will play this dangerous billionaire villain in two consecutive movies, which will basically cement the ending of Marvel Cinematic Universe as we know it. So RDJ, who started it all, will literally be the one who will end it all. And I find something really poetic about that. But if you think this was a wrong decision, I of desperation from Marvel, well, keep watching this video because I might be able to change your opinion. Now, the Russo brothers are also coming back who will be directing Avengers Doomsday and Avengers Secret Wars. And yes, Stephen McFeely is also coming back to write both of these movies. He co-wrote Captain America The Winter Soldier, Captain America Civil War, Avengers Infinity War, and Avengers Endgame. So that's quite the resume there. And I hope Christopher Mercus also comes back as this duo has really given us one of the best comic book movies in entire Hollywood history. Now, Joe Russo, just before introducing Robert Downey Jr. as Dr. Doom, said, if we are going to bring Victor Von Doom to the screen, he's one of the more complex characters in all of comics and potentially one of the more entertaining characters in all of fiction. If we're going to do this, if we're going to bring him to the movie theaters worldwide, then I think we're going to need the greatest actor in the world to play that character. And then RDJ revealed himself as Dr. Doom in Dr. Doom's costume. And I absolutely agree with what Joe 
said. I don't see this as a desperate move or a Disney cash grab moment. And trust me, I do call out Disney when it's necessary. I know the type of an actor Robert Downey Jr. is. If he didn't feel it's okay to come back, I don't think he would have returned. Yes, money is a factor at the end of the day, as this is a business, but also, don't you think it just fits right to see him up on that stage as the greatest villain that has ever come out in all of comic books? Now a question arises, how can the greatest superhero and the greatest villain in the same universe have the same face? Well, there's actually a few possible explanations there, and Deadpool and Wolverine has one of the answers. If that movie taught us one thing about the multiverse, that is the same person can have a different face, or different people can have the same face. So having the same physical appearance isn't gonna be an issue. And Doctor Doom mostly hides behind an iron mask, because he once invented a machine to communicate with his deceased mother from beyond the grave. But the machine backfired and caused a scratch on his chin. But his vanity and ego made him think he was completely disfigured. He then traveled the world and eventually came upon a small village of monks who assisted him in creating a suit of armor. And out of haste, he put on the mask when he was still hot and burned his face forever. So if anything, Doctor Doom has no weakness except Doctor Doom's own ego. Another reason I'm so excited is because Robert Downey Jr. was so deeply invested into the Tony Stark character that he almost became the character and the character became him. I mean, if you ask any Marvel fan, it'd be next to impossible to distinguish the differences between Tony Stark and RDJ. So this is like an actual challenge for him, whether he'll be able to come out of the character Tony Stark and go deeper into the character of Doctor Doom. And I believe an actor of his caliber will surely bring justice to that. Plus, it kind of completes the circle, because there used to be a time when Loki was a villain, but now he's the reason the multiverse is sustaining. And RDJ, who's the greatest hero to ever grace the MCU, will now go on to become the greatest villain to ever come from the MCU. And just the mere possibility of Tom Holland's Peter Parker going up against a villain that practically looks like his mentor Tony Stark is enough to go to the theater and have a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Because don't forget, when he brings such a strong and powerful villain like Doctor Doom and such an important actor like RDJ to play him, the harder it's gonna be for the heroes to defeat him. And that opens the door for the writers to write new character arcs for the already existing superheroes. So even though on paper it may look like Marvel is kind of recycling the same actors, but in reality it raises the bar way too high now. And if you think about why Avengers Infinity War and Endgame worked so well with the audience, is because Marvel kept teasing Thanos since Avengers 1. The audience had an ample amount of time and movies to get to know the character before the big reveal in Infinity War. And now having RDJ, the actor we love the most from the MCU, coming back to play Doctor Doom will just give us, the audience, an opportunity to connect to the character in a far greater way than it would have if it was played by some new actor. And Doctor Doom is not a simple character to play, so any new actor would either hit it or miss it. And if they do miss it, it's game over for Marvel, because the next two Avengers movies are essentially based around this single villain. So Marvel had to go for an actor who the audience will not only connect to, but also bring justice to the character. And RDJ has an Oscar now, and anyone who has seen his role in Oppenheimer can never doubt his acting ability to play a villain. And RDJ has said time and time again that he does not want to be remembered just for playing one single character. So this is his opportunity to show the world that with his acting range, he could bring Tony Stark to life, and now he will bring Doctor Doom to life. Now as far as how could they introduce Doom in the MCU, well, I have a couple of theories. Doctor Doom in the comics is a major Fantastic Four villain, primarily Reed Richards aka Mr. Fantastic. In fact, he has internalized his rivalry with Mr. Fantastic to such an extent he cannot exist without it. And now we have official confirmation from Hall H that Fantastic Four first steps will start filming this week, and it will take place in an alternate retrofuturistic 1960s, not the sacred timeline. And it has also been revealed that Galactus will be the main villain of this movie. So my theory is, in next year's Fantastic Four, Galactus will literally devour the universe the Fantastic Four is set in. As a result, the heroes from this timeline might travel to the sacred timeline as a desperate attempt to save themselves. And along with them, we may see Victor Von Doom entering Earth 616. Marvel also has some other comic iterations where Tony Stark and Doctor Doom literally switch characters. For example, in What If Iron Man Demon in an Armor issue number one, instead of Reed Richards, Tony Stark was now Doom's roommate in college. Annoyed by Stark's behavior, Doom eventually sees Stark's research and asks for his help with the project because he fears losing his scholarship. Now Stark helps, but Doom later traps him to switch minds. And when security arrives, Doom 
aka the real Tony Stark loses his memory and is taken away. So now Doom is stuck in Tony's body while Tony is stuck in Doom's body. And over time both Doom and Stark become successful in their respective industries. And when Doom's new arc reactor threatens Stark's business, Stark sabotages it and destroys Doom Industries. And that's when Stark reveals to Doom that Doom is actually the real Tony Stark while Tony Stark is the real Doom. The real Doom then offers to give Tony his life back, but Tony refuses, saying the Stark name is now ruined and he will continue living as Victor Von Doom. Now that's quite an interesting turn of events, eh? And this is just one version of the comic. There are a few more iterations where Tony Stark and Victor face each other. So there's plenty of source material to work with. So let me know what do you think they will do with Doctor Doom and which comic storyline would be ideal for adapting him to the big screen. I hope I've addressed any concerns you might have had about Robert Downey Jr's return to the MCU. If you're still not sure or disagree with the choice, but one thing is undeniable. There is no way you won't watch this movie. And that speaks volume of what RDJ brings to the table. And if you think about it, Hugh Jackman returned as Wolverine after 7 years. And now Robert Downey Jr. will come back after 7 years as well, albeit as a different character. And don't you think an actor like Robert Downey Jr. deserved to come back in a grand way? If he had come back for some cheeky cameos here and there, that would have ruined his legacy. But the way he's returning now, I don't think this does anything to the send-off he has had as Iron Man.